What do you say? Let's chat for a little while. Would you like that? I hate calling this. I hate calling this thing a fireside chat. It's. Uh, uh, I'm just not original. What can I tell you? I like to be, but uh, I'm not. But in any case, uh, uh, let's chat for the next half an hour. I have a a rather special uh, subject matter, if you will. That's. Uh, it's, it's brief, but it's coming up soon, okay? Uh, and it had a, a demo about it uh, on the way. We've been gone for most of the day, Gail and I, and so we happened to see a doe cross the road in front of us, and Gail brought up the subject, <clears throat> excuse me, Gail brought up the subject that here in our mountain community, she understands via messaging on Facebook and so on, and the websites or whatever you call those things. What do you call those things? Remember? Facebook community. Facebook community. Kind of, you know. That there's a pet that the people are have a pet doe up here that actually comes up to the homes and is hand fed, which brings up the subject that I want to tell you. Uh, reiterate that we've talked about so many other times before, but I want you to understand. Now, we're talking about Georgia now, but over throughout the springtime, into the summer, and into the fall, the does are going to be uh, having their fawns. They'll be fawning, okay? Uh, deer are not pets. Fawns are not pets. You're doing a disservice if you think you are. And I know we'll hear about it every year, from time to time, you know, every year. Oh, gosh, I found a fawn. She, the poor little thing was all alone. It was off on the side of the road in the grass, all huddled up. And there was no other deer around. She must have been abandoned. Mama probably got hit by a car. No, that's probably not the case. Mom, the doe, is probably standing over there not very far away. She knows where the fawn is. A blanket statement, please. Blanket statement. Leave them alone. Wildlife, bear, hogs, the fawns, turkeys, all, those are wild animals. They do not need your help. They, you, they don't, okay? You cannot make pets out of them. So, okay, we'll set this very emphatic, and we'll set that subject aside. May I say this? Yes, please. The, the DNR actually wrote a letter to the people who were concerned about this this fawn, I guess. Oh, I see, yeah, okay. This little doe. Uh -huh. And said, please leave it alone. You know, Scream at it. Make it go away. Mm -hmm. It will be just fine without your help. Well, Leave I, it alone. It kind of reminds me of the same story about our bears. Yes. Uh, Leave we, them alone. We live in the mountains, and uh, uh, f people think that the bears need to be fed. Uh, you remember the old the adage, and it's so very true, a fed bear is a dead bear. If... Uh, a black bear here in the mountains of North Georgia, South Georgia, this whether it's in northern, wh wherever they live, they don't need your help. They've been doing just fine since the Pleistocene era ended, which was 11,700 years ago. They don't need your food. All you're doing is training him to come to a big block place that smells like a human. And he cannot be retrained. He will always be that way. And when you see the DNR leaving with a cage with a mama and a couple of cubs in them to be relocated, yeah, they're relocated all right. Six feet under, that's where they're relocated. So don't feed the bears, don't feed the deers. So yes, really, uh, I hadn't thought about this until just now. Mm-hmm. If you leave the deer alone, they will go and go back to nature. Be, yes. But a bear won't. No, nope, a bear will not. The DNR helped. Interesting. The DNR told me that you cannot retrain a bear to be a bear. 
he will always, even if you move him to an elsewhere, he will always look for a big building that have that smells like humans because he's going to get fed. Well, not here he doesn't. And nowhere should he. He'll be just fine without you. Just fine. Okay. Uh, enough of that. If you'd like to leave us... Uh, Oh, we have several things to talk about today. I hate to be kind of preachy. I'm, I'm sorry, but it was a subject that I, I wanted to touch on. These and, uh, things are important to yes. people who do not know better. Those are important. Well, That's yeah. what you're about, isn't it? Uh, I, I hope I hope if you watch the television show, you listen to the radio program, you join us uh, on a Monday, maybe after it's over you might say, hmm, that was interesting. I didn't know that. I'll have to keep that in mind. I'll have to do that next time. I'll have to not feed the bears. If I see a fawn over in the grass and looks like it's been abandoned, it hasn't. Learn something. This, oh, this is not mysterious. Okay, it's right. And uh, we may, very possibly, we may have a surprise oh. in just a very few minutes. That's right. Maybe, we're not promising anything. Right. But it's very promise. likely going to happen. Okay. Now, what I'd like for you to, uh, uh, the subject for us to look into today, and and I'm going to focus it on the radio program uh, over the next few weeks, well, forever, as often as I can. We are going to have to get young people involved in the outdoors. We are going to have to make fishing and hunting and camping and hiking and squirrel hunting and all those things attractive enough uh, that people, that youngsters, six, eight, nine, ten years old, even into high school, they'll go hunting, they'll go fishing instead of sitting in front of a, a computer game, sitting in front of a computer or playing the, you know, it, memories of outdoors last a lifetime. All through when I was young, I played Little League. I played Babe Ruth. I played Connie Mack. I played four sports in high school. But all those things were wonderful. But those were team sports, and that was good. But believe me, the memories that I shared with my grandfathers when they took me fishing and my, the friends that I had in high school that we went fishing those last a lifetime. And each one of them is extremely unique. Absolutely unique. And I could sit here for five or six hours and tell you stories about fishing with my grandfather. So my uh, grandfather on my father's side, he was a primitive Baptist preacher. And... Uh, he preached in different congregations around in the counties around Atlanta. Very well thought. It was he was uh, uh, Elder Nash, and uh, the, the his congregations spread out across Central Georgia, and many of these people had farm ponds. So he always had a, an open invitation to go to the farm and fish in the little catfish lakes, and. He invited me to go with him when I was eight years old, I guess. And I still remember those days that we went. He wore a vested suit, black wingtip shoes. Uh, he had a straw hat. He did not like the sun. And he wore white gloves with the fingers cut out. And we made a formidable team, we did. We caught a lot of catfish, the two of us. And we cleaned those catfish, and I remember those summer days with him. He was kind. And to give you a indication of his temperament, the most, let's see, how shall I say, uh, the most vehement, the most angry thing he ever said was, well, confound. He didn't cuss, in other words. He didn't know... <laughs> Uh, you know, the F word was not in his vocabulary. He was a minister. And he said, well, confound. Or, now when we, if you lost a fish at the bank, he would say, 
confound or <laughs> gee whiz. And that was it. But that's, the, see here? Now that was 70 years ago. And here I am telling you that story. Those stories last your lifetime if you're involved in the outdoors. And with that in mind, if you're going to get a son, grandson, gr uh, daughter, granddaughter, a kid down the street involved in the outdoors, you have to do it. You have to start it. A nine-year-old is not going to come up and say, Hey, Dad, let's go to so-and-so uh, pond this Saturday. What do you think? No, you do it. You say, son, there's some terrific ponds in the state parks. They've got a dock there. They have houses there. We can spend the weekend there. The lakes are full of fish. It's free. Let's go fishing, you and I. And if you'd like to bring someone else in the neighborhood, a buddy of yours, let's the three of us go and spend the weekend together going fishing. See, fishing is non-consumptive. Uh, take a look at your screen, because uh, uh, I think okay. you're about to be interrupted. What's the story? Oh, are we about to be interrupted? I think we are, possibly. What's the story of the photo of a car and a guy behind you while you do your radio show? Uh, well, okay. We'll have to come back to that. We'll have, have to come back. That's John, and I'm about to do that, but John, the photo behind me when I do the radio show on Saturday mornings, that's Gail when she was 21. Yes. And, uh, wow. <laughs> wow, what can I say? Okay, uh, Danny Huff is watching. Shane is watching. Let's so see. how do I do this? I honey? don't know. You should be getting something that says somebody wants to join. I've got a one right there. You want to press that right there? I don't there? know. You could try it. I, I don't know. Oh, that's Evidently, not it. Evidently, that's not it. Uh, okay. Well, okay. Just hang in there. Clear. Oh, all right, there okay. you are. All right, so okay. we're back. We're, we're going to get a request for someone to join us on this screen, I think. Well, when they do, do you see when it? The, Henry, I, I see, see Henry's it. watching, Rob, Neil, mm -hmm. Danny, Shane, Barbara. Oh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I would appreciate your comments from time to time when we are doing this and on the radio show on a Saturday morning. What do you do? When is the last time you took a kid fishing? When is the last time you took a child into the woods to go listen to the squirrels? Now, here's a tip that m makes it ever more interesting. All right. It sounds contradictory, but do this first. Go to the Internet with the child that you're going to go into the woods with to maybe go squirrel hunting. Or to just to walk in the woods. You don't have to carry a gun. You don't have to kill anything. Go to the Internet and pick out the sounds, the sounds of a crow of a metal lark, okay, of uh, a barred owl, a turkey, the squirrels, the sounds that they make, the different sounds of a chipmunk, a pileated woodpecker. And then when you get in the woods, you walk along the trail, and there's, there's just in that direction right over there, there's the Dawson Forest. There's 27,000 acres of wildlife management area, foot traffic only. No four-wheelers, no Jeeps, no horses, no nothing except you and the child that you're taking into the woods. And you walk in there and just walk along, enjoy the morning, enjoy the day, and then okay. sit down at the base of a tree and keep quiet and time it. Okay, Al, she says she has sent a request. Do you see it? No, I don't. What we're looking for, folks, is uh, Allison and our daughter Allison is in Texas with Travis. And they were going to join us tonight if we could figure out how to get them up there on the screen so that we could uh, visit with Travis for a few minutes. And we will if we can. And she has sent a request, and we are not seeing it, um, unfortunately. Well... If All right. We don't, uh, you know. If it pops up there, we'll get to it. Yes. I have a question here. Someone said something about springtime crappie fishing. When do you start? Now. Go crappie fishing now. And that, all right, has the water temperature warmed up all that much? 
No. Just a few degrees. But what has happened is that the crappie are headed for the banks. What caused it? Well, maybe the water temperature is only up a couple of degrees. However, what's happened is that the increased number of hours of daylight, ever since December the 22nd, we've had more daylight every, every day. The sun stays up longer, and the fish react to that, and they want to they want to nest they want to breed they want to extend the next generation so the crappy fishing is now now so if you had crappy under the dock where you live under the the, the dock under the boathouse whatever they will not leave and go to the banks some will but they will rise in the water column and become more available if they're not, if they're all along in the, in, the, in the creeks, then they'll head to the banks. The key to crappy fishing this time of year, as it's already begun, is use light line, small jigs, fish very slowly, and you'll get bit. Believe me. And think about this. I think just in Georgia, the limit for crappy is 35 Makes for a nice fish fry, won't it? Ooh, you bet it will. Crappy fish is going to be great all over the south, all over, even the, to way up north, maybe even Virginia. Okay. You know, that's, that's really north. All right, take a yes, breath and let's look at the screen. We're looking for a bubble or something, a way it should say that Allison has requested to join the program. I don't, well, a you, bubble you come around here and look. I I can see it from here. Okay. I can see that I don't see anything there. I don't know. Unfortunately. A lot of people are watching, and we're thankful for that. Yes. And, uh, I, and, when, and uh, let's see. Heidi asked, uh, I think it's Heidi, said, are the crappy biting on Lanier? You bet they are. The full moon in February, it really gets started. And throughout the, the full month of March, if you put a bait down there, you'll get bit. You remember my old tip, if you if you have a dock at Lanier that you own or you know someone who owns that dock, okay, if you'll take a, a, a hay bale, tie a rope to it, and a concrete block, tie the other end of the rope to the dock, and throw that hay bale over into the water and let it sink, and as that falls apart, it sets up the entire food chain from the plankton to little minnows to shad to brim to crappie to bass. It creates a whole food chain under your dock. I hope that's legal. I wonder if that's legal. Uh, if I, you're in a neighborhood, it may not be. On Lake you Lanier. might order check. But, hey, check it out. And it's not just Lake Lanier. It's not just right here. It's all over. Anywhere that there's a dock, you got crappy and bass and all that in the lake, throw it in there. And then, after the summer is over and that hay bale has disintegrated, all you do is pull up the rope and you will have tied it to the wire and you've tied it to the concrete block. And then you can put in a fresh one and keep, keep them under the dock year-round. It's a solid, it's a solid, uh, it's a fishbowl. You can just, just have them in there. How do you like my fire? This, not, this wood is not dry. I ran out of dry wood, and this wood is not very dry, so it doesn't flame up very much. But it's still, it's March the 1st. It's still time for us to have a fire. Yes, ma'am. Uh, for some reason, we're not getting the request from uh, okay. Allison as we should. Uh, that would have been fun, and maybe we can do it next week. But, we'll give it a um, try. We yeah. were going to ask uh, Travis. Uh, Travis lives in Oklahoma. He works in Texas. He is a cattleman. You all know Travis. He was on the television show for many, many years. And in our re-airs and our re-edits and so forth, he's still on the television show, and he telephones the radio program. He is a, uh, he's a Texan now. Not North Texas, he make, always makes this point. It's not North Texas, it's the Texas Panhandle. North Texas is south of the Panhandle. So uh, he loves it out there from his, uh, uh, from his acreage, from his home. He cannot see another house. 
So he <laughs> he's a cattleman. He has his cattle and his land, and he is a uh, a turkey guide, a guide for turkeys, a guide for white-tailed deer and mule deer and antelope and coyotes and hogs, and uh, uh, he's uh, living the life. Now, I see someone has proposed uh, some information about the turkey regulations. Well, turkey season right around the corner, and in two weeks, I'm going to um, record a program with the Department of Georgia Department of Natural Resources about the turkey population, because in Georgia and elsewhere in other states, the turkey population is, is declining. Why? Too many coyotes, too many hogs, too many possums, too many raccoons but mostly coyotes, and uh, they destroy the nest, they eat the eggs, especially in the hogs too. You gotta remember, see, the, the hog, that's a non-native species. Here's something, uh, it's beautifully, he says hello, Allison says hello to everybody, but we can't get her on the air. Uh, yeah. uh, hogs are non-native, uh, you need to shoot them, you need to harvest them, but you can't do it with a rifle. Really? You can shoot the one you can see, but believe me, the, what you should do if you want to rid your property, your lease, your farm, wherever you are, you want to eliminate the hogs, you have to trap them. So there are many professional trappers that, that exercise uh, very efficient methods, uh, and there are many videos on... Uh, the internet that gives you demonstrations of how many they get at the time. I know I did a show not, uh, well, a few months ago with the Department of Natural Resources who encourage us to trap the hogs. They're extremely destructive. And it will not happen quite this way, but close. This is a demo. You have a mated pair, male and female hog. If their offspring live, they won't all live, but if they did, and they mate, and their offspring live, and they mate, from two in 15 months end up being 108 under ideal conditions. Now, it won't happen that way, but it's close. You have to, just like you would manage your pond, manage your front yard, manage your farm, you have to get rid of the hogs. Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm yes. just still looking for that request that no, I don't, never didn't have come seen. through. No, I know. So I'm, I'm sorry, sorry about that. So, but I appreciate you guys watching and, uh, uh, hey, somebody, listen. Uh, someone yeah. wants to know about uh, crappy fishing tips and about a jig, whether you bounce it up and down or you... Uh, crappy fishing methods, uh, light line, small baits. The less you do with the jig, the greater your chance is that you're going to get bit. And... I always have. I did a recorded show not long. It's going to be on the air in a couple of weeks. The, the effect of the color red on a game fish. Hmm. I wonder what that means. If a fish is feeding, if a game fish, a crappy, a bass, large bass, spotted bass, whatever it is, if a fish is feeding... His gills will become engorged in blood and be red. That's the trigger for other game fish to get excited about it, to be ready, to be armed, to be hungry, to want to bite. The color red, which is the gills engorged in blood. So, what does that mean for you as an angler? Use red hooks, True Turn or Daiichi red hooks. And all of your baits, whether they be 
road runners, hair jigs, whatever, they should have just a little bit of red. A red eye, a red gill, a red on the side, a dot, remember? Make it red, okay? Uh, it works. Now, as always, I hedge my bets by telling you, you're not, if you use something that's the light line, red hooks, red baits, you're not suddenly going to catch 200 instead of catching two. But it will increase your catch. Absolutely, it will increase your catch if there's something red in there. Now, you know me, I'm getting caught in a lie because I've always said this, that doesn't matter what spinnerbait you use, as long not what color spinnerbait you use, as long as it's chartreuse. <laughs> but I will tell you that the skirt on my spinnerbait, my predominantly chartreuse spinnerbait, the skirt has red in it. Mm. And I, I, I should have known why that worked. I did not until I spoke to the people at True Turn and their scientific research made such great sense about the color red. So, so how are we doing time-wise? Uh, um, let's see, I think we've been on 26 minutes. 26, okay. Uh, I will say that once this is posted on to uh, Facebook, uh -huh. and you have had an opportunity to go to it, that you will answer some of these questions. Absolutely. You do that, don't you? Yes, I do. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, now, this will go on Facebook probably, I don't know. Well, immediately. Tonight? Yeah, it's on Facebook know. now, uh -huh. but then it'll be it'll be put on there. So, so let me encourage you to consider the purchase of O'Neill Outside. 65 years in the outdoors, people in places along the way, you can buy it at my website at O'NeillOutside.com. You can review it and look at it and read it and buy it off of Amazon. And uh, it's a good book, and I think you'll read it. I, I, I tell the story of my grandfather in that book. And one of them. One of them. Mm -hmm. And maybe next week I'll tell you the story of my other grandfather. I think I probably already have, but... I'm not above repeating myself. I mean, I've been on television for almost four decades and uh, on ra radio. It's kind of hard to get new stories, yeah, isn't yes. it? Yes. I've been on radio for 28 years or something like that. Uh, uh, am I subject to repeating myself? You bet. <laughs> Is it time? Oh, that means it's time. Are there anything left? Uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, somebody says they fished hard labor, hard labor Creek reservoirs. What's some of the best baits? Uh, crappy fishing at Hard Labor Creek is good now, uh, and the bass fishing is right around the corner, about the full moon in March. Uh, you know, what you're going to have to do, gonna, if you're going to be a better angler, you got to go. you got to give it a try. You've got to go under the full moon. You've got to go under the, the new moon. You've got to go do, over and over again. Do you That's see how, on there, I can't see, a request? Did Allison? You, yes. Yeah, she's that. saying, buy from Texas. No, I thought she was, no, she sent a request to be on here. Well, she According needs to. to my, she needs to resend it. Well, she sent it ten times, but it's showing up on mine. Oh, well, it needs to show up on mine instead. You don't see it? No. Oh, Gary Hall is asking about walleye at Lake Lanier. Go now. It's about over, up the river, I don't up the Chester that. Tee. I don't uh, understand You can that. catch a lot of walleye. Lanier's got a lot of walleye in there, but the only time you can catch them is in there in the river, up the up the Chester Tee River, up the Chattahoochee River, and you gotta want to you gotta want to do that. It's uh, I tell you what, you can go to that. You can get away with this. You can go to Lake Blue Ridge now. Use crankbaits up the, uh, what's that river? Tacoa River that feeds Blue Ridge. You can catch walleye 
dozens of terrific tasting walleye on crankbaits. But here's the kicker. It's at night now. You got to want to do this real bad. Because believe me, about 1.30 to 2 o'clock in the morning, you're casting crankbaits for walleye, you're going to think, What in the world am I doing? I've done that a couple of times. I caught a boatload of walleye, but I haven't been back. But that's okay. Uh, she, Allison says she sent it again. Uh, Let me punch that. I'm gonna see if that comes that up. That right there. I'm gonna do that right there. That doesn't do anything. Oh. I'm sorry. She sent it to you. I see it, but you know, but I'm on a different device. But oh. you know, I, but I do see she that she needs to it. send it to my phone instead of yours. No, she knows that, honey. <laughs> you, you should. Neil see. Murphy's looking, watching, right? Yeah. Okay. Allison says, "Mom, hit what you see on screen." All right, I'm okay. gonna punch that right there. Hit what you see on screen. Right. Okay. Hold on. Where did it go? If we knew what we were doing, we'd be better at it. <laughs> but we do it with great enthusiasm and great loyalty. And, yes, I mean, after all, I mean, there's something else I could be doing right now other than sitting here talking to you. But I enjoy doing it. That's my obligation, okay? Because people taught me about the outdoors. People taught me about fishing. People taught me, taught me about hunting. People... It taught me about going into the woods. When I was a little kid, when I was 7, 8, 9, 10 years old, I hunted with a BB gun. Well, kind of, oh, man, I can remember. I used a daisy, but when I got a pump BB gun, oh, man, oh, I was bad to the bone. That pump was really good. And uh, there's uh, Gary calling from Kentucky. Anyway... Uh, well, I hit everything that I... Do, do what you can. Go, schedule it now. In the next couple of days, schedule a trip with a little kid. A family member or a kid down the street whose dad is not an outdoorsman. It's up to you. It has to be the adult that has to determine where you go, when you go, how you get there, the equipment that you use, everything about it. And you can find out in the State Department of Parks and Recreation and the Department of Natural Resources in whatever state you live. And you will have known that you have possibly started a child in the outdoors. And it's so much more worthwhile than sitting in front of a computer or in front of a one of these games with machine guns and bombs going off. It lasts forever. Time up. Oh, it's been up. Oh, it yeah. is. But I, okay. You know, we hit what we could find, and uh, I even sent a request to join, oh, and it you? didn't recognize <laughs> me either. So there you go. We tried. To bring you a little humor from, uh, what's you, the name of that little town in, in Texas where he is right now? Uh, he's in Wheeler, Texas. Wheeler, Texas. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's great to be a cowboy. On days like this, you get to put in a new septic tank. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Travis is living the life. He, uh, he works seven days a week from sun up to sundown, and that's perfect for him. He's the boss. And, uh, oh, he's going to get a new horse. Oh, he is? Yeah, he's going to buy another horse. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and he's going to keep the old one. Of course, you have to keep the yeah. pets. Yes. The, the, the first horse was named Rudy. And now he's going to get a new horse. And, yeah. uh, the other one's Peanut. Yeah, Peanut was in there also. He sold Peanut to somebody else. He's, uh, Allison think, says they're in Kelton. They're in Kelton. Kelton, Texas? Yes. Oh, okay. That's where, that's where she is. All right, Cork's... It's all the same place. Uh, hey, Cork's back in the jug. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, we will see you on Saturday morning, 4 a.m. Eastern Time, on O'Neill Outside Radio, WSB, covering 38 states in the Sports Map Radio Network, and very soon... Unless I miss my guess. 
You better not. I'm going to say, say it anyway. It. No. I'm going to say you it anyway. Not. You know, I don't think I'm so. I'm going to say it anyway. Watch don't me. Don't do it. Don't I'm do it. I'm going to do it. Watch don't me. Don't do it. Okay? You're going to get in trouble. Serious XM. <laughs> O'Neill outside. We'll see you later.